Hello, Arc Tinsel. I hope you're all well. It's Miss McAllister here. I hope you are all safe and happy at home at the moment and ready to join in with Tindal Bingo. My task for you today is a drawing challenge. I wonder how many of you are going to have a go. Today, for your challenge, you are going to be creating a self-portrait. But first, we need to know what a portrait is. A portrait is a piece of art depicting a person. And that artwork can be made in lots of different styles or with lots of different mediums, such as pencil or paint or pastel or chalk, anything you can think of, so long as it shows a person. On your screen, you should be able to see a couple of examples of some famous portraits. We've got the Mona Lisa, which was made by Leonardo da Vinci in 1503, which we can see is a beautiful painting of a lady. In the middle, we can see the Chandos portrait, which was by John Taylor in around 1610. It's one of the most famous portraits we have depicting William Shakespeare. And on the far side, we can see a very different looking portrait. This is a portrait of Pablo Picasso, another artist. We can see that it doesn't look quite the same as realistic as the others, but it's still a portrait because it's still a piece of artwork showing a person. A self-portrait is a portrait of yourself. Lots of artists have created self-portraits hundreds of years. We can see Leonardo da Vinci on the far left-hand side of your screen created a self-portrait of himself when he was around 60 years old in 1512. We can see he used his. His was made out of chalk. In the middle, we can see a work by Pablo Picasso. His looks very different. It doesn't look quite so realistic because that wasn't his style of artwork. So portraits and self-portraits can come in all sorts of different styles. The important thing is that a self-portrait is a drawing of yourself. And the, last, the final one we can see on the right hand side is of Vincent van Gogh. Again, his style is slightly different. His was created with paint and he created lots of self-portraits. He really studied the way that he looked and we can see that in his artwork. Before you get started on your own self-portraits today, you're going to need to collect a few different items. You're going to need a mirror, some paper, and a pencil or a pen. I'd like you to make sure you ask your adult before you take anything at home to make sure that there's something that's appropriate for you to use, so that you're okay to have. So make sure you ask first. If you have them at home, after you've created the sketch for your portrait, you can add some other mediums such as paint or coloured pencil, crayon, even collaging with coloured paper or using something like chalk or pastel if you have those things at home. So let's get started. To get started, I'd like you to make sure you're sitting somewhere nice and still and you've got your mirror somewhere where you can see your face and where you can keep your mirror still and you're not going to keep having to touch it. I've got my mirror, my mirror's pop it just by here, where I can see my face. It's important that I stay sitting in the same place so that every time I look in the mirror, I'm seeing the same image. That will be really helpful for me when I start to do my drawing. I've got my paper and I've got my pencil. The very first thing that we need to do is draw the shape of our face. This is really going to help us so that we can position all of our facial features in the right place. So let's start by drawing the shape of our face. To do this, I need to look in the mirror. I need to see what shape my face is because our faces aren't round and they're not even really oval. Different people have different shaped faces and it's one of the things that makes you look like you. So have a really careful look at the shape of your face and have a go at sketching really lightly with your pencil or pen and having a go at creating that shape on your piece of paper. Okay. Next, I'm going to have a go at adding my hair. So my hair is tied up today. That means that the hairs on my head are moving away from my forehead. I'm gonna use my pencil to show that by drawing lines away from my head to show the direction that my hair is flowing, is going in. And I can see some of my hair here. I can see it in the mirror. So I'm going to include that as well. To do that, I'm going to need to add my neck and my shoulders. So I'm going to add my neck and my shoulders onto my drawing, along with the edge of my jumper, because my jumper I can see in the mirror as well. I'm going to add that on. 
Okay, now it's time for our facial features, the things that make our faces so interesting to look at. I'm going to start with my nose because then I think that will help me to place everything else. To find out where my nose should go, I know that if I'm looking straight at the mirror, my nose is about in the middle. But I need to know what distance down my head to draw it. So if I'm looking at my head in the mirror, I can see my nose isn't halfway between the top and the bottom, the top of my head and my chin. It's actually about two thirds of the way down. So I'm going to draw a little mark to show where the bottom of my nose is, because that will help me later. Then from there, I'm going to have a go at putting in my lips, my eyes and my eyebrows. Do that very, very quickly. Okay. Next, I'm going to have to add my ears because when I'm looking in the mirror straight on, I can see parts of my ears. If you're wearing a headscarf and you can't see your hair or your ears, that's fine. Draw your headscarf instead. If your hair is covering your ears up, then you don't need to draw them. Only draw what you can see in the mirror. It's challenging. So I'm going to draw my ears. I can see that they start at about the bottom of my eyebrows and they end at about the same height as my nose. So that will help me to place them on my head and to get them the right size. Okay. Now, next, I want to focus on what makes my face different to everybody else's face. My eyebrows are going to be a different shape to other people's. On my face, I have got some moles, which also make my face different to everybody else's. So I'm going to look really carefully for all of those details that make me unique. And I'm going to see if I can draw some of them onto my artwork, looking really carefully at where they are positioned. Okay. I'm also going to add in things like my earrings, which I can see, which make me look, make me unique. So they're not the same as everybody else because I want my artwork to look like me for a self-portrait. Okay. I've had a really quick first attempt at drawing my self-portrait. The last thing I'm going to do is seeing if I can add a little bit of shading. Now, what that's going to do as a challenge is going to help make my artwork look a little bit more three-dimensional because 3D objects, objects you can hold, when the light shines on them, it creates areas of shadow because your object is blocking the light. So some areas will be darker than others. When I look in the mirror, I can see that some areas of my face might look darker than others because of where the light is shining on them. Your face, the light will shine on it differently depending on where you're sat at home and where your light is coming from. It might be coming from a light in the ceiling, it might come from a lamp, it might even be the light through your window. So have a look really carefully and see what areas have got are a bit darker than the others and which areas are in the light. The areas that are a bit darker, I can go in very, very gently with my pencil and shade. To soften it then, if I'd like to, I can rub very gently with my finger, which will help to soften some of the lines from my pencil. If you're using pen, it will not work the same way, but that's okay. You can still have a go at shading, going really lightly with your pen. So I'm gonna have a go. I can see that this side of my face is darker because the light is over there. So I'm going to see if I can add in a little bit of shading into my drawing so far. And that will happen. Okay, I'm going to just smudge with my finger, just soften it up a little bit because I don't want lines across my face. Okay, I have finished my first attempt. Now, Real artists try again and again and again and are careful and slow. So I'd like you to have a go at this task today, taking real care over your work. I finished my first attempt of my self-portrait. Now, when I finished or when you finished your self-portrait drawing, you can go in and add some colour if you'd like to, to really show off your artwork. You can use pencils or pens or paints, whatever you have at home. 
I really hope you enjoyed creating your self-portraits today and I'm sure your teachers would love to see your amazing artwork. If you'd like to share it with them, you can take a photograph of your self-portraits and upload them to Seesaw to your journal where your teacher will be able to see them. And I really hope you've enjoyed today. See you soon, Tyndall. Bye.